you so much. Very, very kind. Thank you so much. Yeah. Wow. It's always good to be back home. Uh, we uh, traveled around the world, really one time around the world. I started in Singapore, I preached there, then in Hillsong, Sydney, then in New Zealand, amazing place, actually it was winter, uh, and then in Hawaii. Who has ever, who has been in Hawaii? Beautiful, oh my gosh. It's every day warm. Warm, 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 even at night. Then I'm finished in California, flew to London, back to Switzerland, I'm here again. So good to be back home, come on. Um, yeah, uh, we're doing like a seven weeks uh, preaching series about the uh, tabernacle and please take out your smartphone because I want to ask you three questions and you can see on, this, on the screen uh, the number you can put in because I want to ask you three questions because it's impossible to come to church without the smartphone and the Bible or the smartphone, the Bible is in the smartphone, whatever. I want to ask you three questions about your prayer uh, style and the, are you ready? The question number one is how? How do you pray? Fixed prayer times, uh, every then and now, or you have quick prayers, or without cheesing, or very rarely. Just be honest about your prayer style, and check this out. Um, quick prayers, 13. Every now and then during the day, it's 55%. Wow, it's amazing. Check this out. Fixed prayer times, only 8%. Come on, I preach this every, day, every Sunday. Have a routine. Question number two. What does your prayer style look like? Are you more strategic prayer, situation oriented, or maybe rather chaotic? Chaotic means spontaneous. Proclaiming or I don't know. Maybe you hear say, I don't know. This question, it's too deep. I don't know. So, uh, I don't know, it's 8%, that's too much. 7% um, it's proclaiming. You can see situation on tenant is always over 50%. Um, yeah, that's all actually the case. Now comes the question number three. What does the relationship between speaking and listening look like in your prayer? Like 100% speaking, zero listening. Or zero speaking, 100% listening. Just be honest. Uh, about your prayer style. What do you think uh, is the percentage about listening and speaking? Yeah, zero percent speaking, yeah? Thank you so much, there must be at least one person. 64%, thank you so much, Nicoline. Um, 80% are saying, um, yeah, 80% are speak, 20% are listen. I think that's like in every celebration was the same number. Thank you so much for the interaction because I love it. Gives me always a little bit of feeling, where is the church at? You know, I think everyone, you had an encounter with God. My first encounter in my life was when I played in a hard rock band. You have to understand, I'm like a guitar player when I was super young. My first encounter was, I was 18 years old. I received Christ through a hard rock band, actually. And two things I start to realize in my life. First of all, the hand of God is above me. That means the day you receive Christ means the hand of God is always upon you. That means God is, is protecting you every single day, every single minute. And not only that, God always is guiding you. The hand of God is guiding you. When I look back in my life, people often ask me, do you think um, you are happy the way you are right now? I say, always saying the ways, the, the thoughts of God and the ways of God are always different. But you can see God guide me from a worship leader to a preacher, to a teacher, to a church planter. And all of a sudden, I planting churches around the world. And this is pretty amazing, actually. That means God protects me and also guides me. The same thing is actually in your life as well. When we think about the people of God, when they moved out from Egypt, you see the two things as well. Because you have to understand, two million people on the run in the desert. Now comes my question number one. If you are in the desert and it's maybe 50 degrees, what is your protection? Your protection was like the pillar of cloud. Can you bring the picture? The pillar of cloud means God protected the people from the sun. No sunscreen needed. Under my umbrella, Ella, 
Ella, Ella, E, E. The pillar of cloud was a symbol. God protects you guys every single moment. What's about in the, in the night? There were no flashlight, nothing. There was the pillar of fire. The pillar of fire was a symbol. God is guiding you through the desert. You see, protection and guidance as well in the Old Testament. For example, when God also said, I want to I live with you forever, was the moment when the pillar of cloud and the pillar of fire stopped and God said, I want to build a house as I can be among you, with you guys. In Leviticus chapter 26, verse 11 and 12, God says, I will live among you and I will not despise you. I will walk among you and I will be your God and you will be my people. God is saying, I will be with you forever. The guidance and the protections every single moment. And that's actually amazing news. How has God built the tabernacle? He always uses people. How does God build the kingdom of God? He uses you and me. Two guys were appointed by the Holy Spirit. Number one, Batzel. He came from the tribe of Judah, the largest tribe. Then Oliab from the tribe of Dan, the smallest tribe. Why is the smallest or the largest and the smallest important? This is a statement God uses needs every one from every tribe from every level from every education wherever you are God needs you the kingdom of God is built on all different people different color and different varieties and this is actually an amazing statement from God here in the Old Testament you have to understand names have always a meaning for example when I go to Cambodia they will ask me what's your name I will say my name is Leo they start to laugh because Leo means in Cambodian language underwear. Yeah, you know that? Leo means here like Lion King, you know? But in Cambodian means underwear. Names in the Old Testament has always a meaning. Have you ever thought, what is the meaning of Bezalel? Bezalel means in God's shadow. We are protected in God's shadow again. Then the name Oliop means my tent is the father. What's your name? My, my father is the tent. That means God guides me. And here you can see as well the two things. God protects me and God guides me. God protects me and God guides me. God protects me and God guides me. If we will have like, um, what's the word, like uh, the camera who flies, what's the word? Spider. Spider cam. If you go into the air, you can see something from above in, in terms of the Lord's tabernacle. I want to show you a picture and this is very impressive here. Oh, technique. Thank you. Thank you. Good. So, with the spider camera, you see something here? This is the, the tabernacle. All the elements are in one line. In one line. You see this? One line. And here are two things left inside the, 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 the table of bread. And the menorah stands for the Holy Spirit. This gives the symbol of a cross. Here again the message, the cross has the message, God protects me from heaven and he leads me and guides me on this earth. If you see, for example, I don't know, um, I live in Wallisellen, but God gave every tribe a special place where they should live. And here as, as well, as you can see, is this right? This one? Yeah, here. Check this out. What do you see? What do you see? The cross again. With the spider camera, you can see the cross. And actually how the city was always the message, the cross of God 
it's your future. Because there is protection from God and there's always guidance in your personal life. There are so many symbols in the tabernacle in the Old Testament. And let's dig into the tabernacle for a moment. I want to mention two points. Thanksgiving in prayer, my God guides me every single moment in my journey. God guides me. Can we give for that statement, God, a, a shout of applause? We have a God who guides me. We often think that's a no-brainer. No, it's not a no-brainer because often we think early in the morning, where is God? He is already there. He guides me. He protects me. He knows everything. In Psalm 100 verse 4, enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. Why I'm so happy, why I'm clappy, why I'm positive, because I know this is a statement early in the morning that God knows everything on my journey. He has my life in his hand. You know, when Jewish people, for example, they have a lot of rituals before they're going out to work, they touch the door. As a statement, God bless my house and bless every single step during my day. Every email, every WhatsApp, every spoken word, every connection in business. God, you are leading and guiding me. You're protecting me. They believe that from the bottom of my heart. My problem often is I get up early in the morning and I'm tired. And I think, oh, I'm glad if, if the job is over. But you have to understand, God has a big purpose in every single day in your own life. Believe every single moment that God's presence is with, is with you. Even though sometimes we say stupid things, right? Even though then God can use stupid things. Sometimes you hurt a people with stupid things, then God will use that, that that person will learn to forgive. I was uh, in, in, in Asia and uh, we I played golf with a guy and we were choking and laughing and he said to me, oh, I don't have a job for more than one year, no job anymore. And I just thought out of my blue, I said to him, stop drinking. He said, how do you know? I said, what should I know? About the drinking? I don't know. I just start to choke a little bit. He was so serious and said, nobody knows that. I have an alcohol addiction for more than two years. My wife has no clue. My past has no clue. And you're the first guy who mentioned that. How do you know? I, said, I don't know. I was just choking. And that was the moment I was so shocked because even sometimes, if I, even though if I don't understand my brain, God can use a choke to, to touch a people's life. That's why when you get up in the morning, the first position, I believe that the presence of God is guiding me every single moment. Exodus chapter 27, verse 16. For the entrance of the courtyard provides a curtain 20 cubes long, a blue, purple, scarlet yarn, fine twisted linen, the work of emperor, with four posts of bases. When I read that, I said, Wow, it's a lot of colors. Why so many colors? If we zoom the entrance for a moment, as you can see, if you're zooming the entrance for a moment, the, all those colors has a prophetic meaning. How do I enter with God? One way is reading the Bible. And the four color means the four uh, writers of the gospel. And here is an overview of the, the, the colors, the writers, and even though the prophetic verse in the book of Reverence. For example, the color purple is often used for a king. And the purple stands for the writer, the Matthew, because often it says in the book of Matthew, Jesus is the king. He is the real king. He is the king. He is the first and the last word and the last and first. He is the king. King and a lion is a king. Then comes the color for the book of Mark. The um, scarlet means the sacrifice. The sacrifice means the bull. And the Mark is writing all the time Christ sacrificed his life so that we are healed in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Mark is saying sacrifice becomes a miracle in your own life. 
When you read, for example, Luke, it's more like the human being is the color white, means he was a human like you and me. He can feel, understand, he knows everything, but he was without sin. And the book of John means the eagle, the color blue stands for eagle, is Jesus, the heavenly one. Why is this so important? It is important. Because every writer gives us a glimpse of one characteristics of Jesus. The visionary, the king, the healer, but in the same way also the human being, like you and me. Why is this so important? We can enter the presence of God because sometimes we go into different seasons. For example, the last six months, my season was really, really rough and tough because in December, Susanna's father died out of the blue. He went to heaven one week before Christmas. You know, our worship leader, she passed away in um, June. She went to Jesus. We could not move in our new apartment. It was really, for me, the roughest six months in my whole journey as a preacher, teacher, and a leader. Why I'm saying that to you? That means in those moments you're facing a rough season, then it's the book of Luke, your book. The book of Luke in the Gospel of Luke is saying, God sees, God hears you cry, and God can feel. That means in those seasons I read the book of Luke because all the story gives me the glimpse that Christ hugs me, embraces me. He understands me for that season. You know, you know what I mean? That was my, my entrance to the presence of God. And after a while, of course, after six months, you come into the conclusion, but he's also the king. He knows what he's doing. And after you receive God as a king, you need a new vision. It means the John. And after you have a vision, then you know it's the Mark, book of Mark. He's a God of signs and miracles. You understand that all the four colors is like an entrance for the presence of God. If you're right now, for example, going to a rough season, maybe your book is the book of Mark. You proclaim in your situation, over your family, over your health, God is a healer. And he is a healer. And he will heal me. That's your proclamation for a moment. This is one way to enter the presence of God. All the four colors are the four gospels with a different glimpse how God is. And I love Actually, the, the tabernacle, because there's so many colors, names, size, and the elements. Another thing is, to enter the presence of God is reading the Bible early in the morning. This is one thing. The second thing is, be quiet. Just listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. This is what I do every morning when I get up, not because I'm tired. I always put the alarm a clock long, long before I get up. And I just laying in the bed and say, God, here I am. Is there anything you want to say to me? Please listen to me. Some months ago, I heard clearly early in the morning, buy your two sons a motorbike. They're 20 and 18 years old. In the year 2019, it's this year. In the summer, you will do Swiss vacation with the motorbikes. You're going over the Alps and you're doing biking and climbing, biking and climbing. I said, yes, sir, I will do it. Wrote it down in my journey. And here was a challenge. I had no money to buy the bikes. Sometimes God speaks to you. It's a great idea, God. It's amazing. Hallelujah. But I need money. Have you ever had this experience? You know what I do? What do you, then you, what you do? Just write down and wait upon the Lord. Month passed and month passed and month passed. No money, no bikes, just an idea. And I knew this is like the order of God. And one Sunday I was in this uh, celebration. God spoke to me during worship. He said to me, you have a house. I was supposed to rent out the house. And he said to me, don't rent out the house. Sell the house. I said, oh my gosh. I was going to explain to my wife, sell it. I went to my family and said, we have to sell the house. And we had a price in our mind. The price was super high. But the family who bought the house paid even more. Even more. 
With that even more, I could buy the bikes. You see, it's amazing how it works together. And here's a picture of our bike vacation. And this is actually a miracle. Bergün, Bergün, um, Grimsel Pass. And here you see my challenge. God said, biking and climbing. And we had no space for the helmet. And the helmet was like outside. And every bike said, what's this? I said, biking and climbing is weird, you know. And I want to say, show to you like a climbing moment in my life and just watch this clip because sometimes God speaks to you and you don't have the money, then comes the money, then you do the climbing and then you are again stuck in a special season. You see this? Goes down maybe 50 meters. It looks easy, but I tell you, I, 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 I was, have you seen my face? I was not relaxed. And here's the thing, in my quiet time, God spoke to me, buy some bikes, I need a miracle, and then do the climbing thing, and I did it, and I need God as well again. And I want to challenge you right now, Thanksgiving starts with four colors of the four Gospels. Just pick one out for your season. Read in the Bible and be quiet in the presence of God and listen to the voice of God because God has more in store than you can ever think or imagine. Now I want to ask you a question. Have you ever seen a family who's doing biking together? I don't know any family. I'm not super proud, I just want to say to you, sometimes God surprises you. He can do bigger things you never thought about it. Come on. The second thing is the prayer of praise. My God protects me, and that's very important. In Psalm 38, verse 10, Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I will rather be a doorkeeper in my house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. And let's go into the tabernacle for a moment. When God is saying it's better to be thousand, one day in the court than 1,000 days outside. Check out the curtains in the outside. Nothing special, right? White, the pillars, nothing special, right? But you, if you enter the door, everything is changing from gold to silver. And in the holy of holy, everything is only gold and gold and gold and gold. When you receive in Christ, you're stepping into the kingdom of God from the inside. Everything is changing to gold, to the presence of God. But on the outside, it looks very, very simple. And here is a Bible verse in Isaiah. Check this out. 35 verse 2. There was nothing beautiful or magic about his appearance, speaks about Jesus. Nothing that tracks us to him. Check this out, the tabernacle from the outside. You'll say, oh my gosh, that's not beautiful. It's ugly. It's nothing special. No color. Yes. But if you're entering the presence of God, everything changed. You understand? People say, why should I go to church? Church looks boring. Church looks old. Why should I receive Christ? Christ looks boring. Yes, maybe from the outside. But if you're stepping in, things is changing. All of a sudden you say, no, no, no. If you're in the presence of God, everything all of a sudden is different. In Exodus chapter 38, verse 16 to 17, again, and all the curtains around the courtyards were of fine twisted line. The base of the post were bronze. The hooks and the bands of the post were silver. And to the top were overlaid with silver, so that all posts of the courtyard had silver bands. 
God speaks actually about those pillars. That's from the outside, 56 pillars. Silver, wood, and bronze. Silver, wood, and bronze. And here is a message. Jesus Christ died on a wood, on a cross. And silver stands for salvation. Christ is my salvation. He is my sacrifice and bronze is judge. It's a message already. From the outside, God is saying, Christ will die on a wood, on a cross, on your behalf. And you will, he will save you. And not only that, he will judge you forever. And Isaiah chapter 1 verse 18, and this is an amazing Bible verse. Come now, let us settle the matter, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red as crimson, they should like wool. If it red, it should become white. And here is actually a message about the courtyard. What was red becomes white. And those color has an amazing meaning. I want to tell you a story to explain you about that curtain. It has a meaning for you and me as well. God is my righteousness. He makes me holy. He makes me clean. He covers me as his son and daughter in the kingdom of God. I have a pocket list. And on that pocket list was I want to travel one day around the world. And while I'm traveling around the world, I would love to preach around the world. This was on my pocket list. And I cannot invite me by myself. And a year ago, I was in Australia. And in one week, the miracle took place. People from Singapore, Sydney, New Zealand, Hawaii, California invited me to preach all at the same time. There was a church, they paid two flight tickets for me and my wife. And I said to God, that's unreal. I'm so happy. And I knew I would preach in many, many big stages around the world. And we, we took every week English class, my wife and I. Every week, every week. <laughs> I still have things to learn. But every Tuesday, we went to English class. For that moment when we travel around the world, I will be ready with my best, best English as I can preach. I was so happy. For month and month, even in the biggest Christ in our church, they come on, in June, I will go to Sydney, to New Zealand, around the world. This was my pocket list. God opened amazing doors. And listen to me. One day before I preached on the first stage in Singapore, one day before the first message, I got the hardest email from a close friend I ever get. The email was so rude. The words were so mean. I cannot express it. It was so painful, the email. And I'm not young anymore. I'm not 20 or 25 years old anymore. I have many experience in life. It was the worst email I ever got in my life. I was in the hotel in Singapore. I was crying and weeping. I was so hurt. I thought, how in the flipping world can a human being who is close to me say words like this? I want to tell you how I felt. Sometimes in life, life is not always fair. People are not always nice to you. Or maybe even though you or I made a mistake. I don't want to say I did everything right to that person. But the words he used came straight from the hell. I was crying and weeping. And all of a sudden, the whole joy of traveling, of preaching was gone through one email. Have you ever experienced a moment like this? One email. One phone call. One text message. One reaction. Boom. Everything is gone. This was the moment. Listen to me. I had to make a decision. 
It's better to be one day in the house of God than 1,000 in the world. This was the moment I took the white rope and addressed myself and I said to God, you are for me. Jesus, you died on my behalf and you are my salvation. You are my redeemer and you are my judge. The good thing is by the email, by the computer, there is a delete button. And that evening, that hotel, I deleted that email forever. <laughs> Let it go. Let it go. And I dress myself with the white curtain that God is my righteousness. Nothing on planet earth can stop me. The blessing, the anointing, the joy of the world around trip from all the stages. And I will go into the world. I will preach the gospel like never before. Check this out when you dress yourself with the white robe. It looks ugly. But it's a statement. Christ is with me, is in me. He died on my behalf and I belong to the family of God and nothing on planet earth can stop me. Even though if I'm not perfect, the kingdom of God and the blessing and the authority of God is still upon me. And after I made that declaration and put the delete button, I was ready to preach in a new level around the world. And these are two pictures of Sydney. This is Hillsong, Sydney from the front, Hillsong Sydney from the stage. And you know, it was for me one of the best five weeks in terms of preaching because I dressed myself with the righteousness of God. Do you understand? In the tabernacle, there's so many colors, names, ropes, pillars, and everything is a message to you and me. God is here. He protects you every single moment. Not only that, He also guides you. Can we close our eyes for a moment? I don't know, maybe you're here for the very first time in your life. and Or maybe you say, oh, Pastor Leo, it sounds great. God protects me. I went through so many rough seasons in my life and, and I, I don't really see the favor of God upon me. Or maybe along your journey, you lost somehow the connection. Or even though sometimes it could be that you say, I heard God, He spoke to me so clearly, I wrote it down. But years passed and years passed, but nothing happened. And I want to give you right now the opportunity to make Christ as your Lord and Savior. Maybe for the very first time, or maybe as a recommitment again, you trust God in all areas. I want to say in all areas. Maybe say, Pastor Leo, please include me in that prayer. I need Christ again. I won't need forgiveness again. I made mistakes by choice. Or even though I'm hurt because of an email or a text message from people. If you say, I want to get right with God again. When all the eyes are closed, I would love to pray with you. I want to love to involve you into the prayer that, that you get right with God. If this is you before I pray, I want to ask you something boldly. If this is you, just can you lift your hand as high as possible when I count and read to say, here I am, Pastor Leo. Include me in your prayer. I want to be a part of the kingdom of God. When I count and read, just lift your hand and then I would love to pray with you in one, two, three. Lift your hands up. Thank you so much. Thank you for all the hands. Please take your hands down and I would love to involve you into the prayer. Say, dear Jesus, thank you so much for my unique life. Please forgive me all my sins and failures. I receive your forgiveness. I make you as my Lord and Savior. Please lead me and guide me. Please bless me and protect me. I am yours forever. 
And the Bible says, when your prayer is prayer, you're born again, you're forgiven, you belong to the family of God. God says, welcome home. Church, can we give those people right now a big hand? Because it's always a statement, it's always a declaration, it's always a proclamation. Now in closing of the message, I love to be quiet in the presence of God. Because every time when we have been quiet in ISIS Zurich, we gave the Holy Spirit space, room to minister, to speak. He came, He spoke, He healed. He lifted some people up. He gave some people new vision, new dreams. Father God, thank you for the statement that your hand is upon us. Thank you for the fact that you are the God who guides me. And I'm so happy that you are for me. And as a church, we want to be quiet right now. Is there anything, Father God, you want to say to us? Please speak to me. came to church uh, I spoke with a person and immediately the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said buy that person a flight ticket I said oh it's early in the morning I came in praised Jesus in the first celebration and he said to me hey spoke to you ah, yes I know but I'm not in the mood to fly to buy a flight ticket you know sometimes we are not in the mood <laughs> we are, I said yeah, why always me do you think I have so much money he said I don't care just buy the flight ticket and this is what I want to say to you sometimes you hear the Holy Spirit as a lightning bolt moment like boom like this out of the blue I think right now some people you have right now an idea came out from the blue that means came from God and boom we leave to God again that's why so important to be quiet in the presence of God whenever we give room he speaks strikes the first spark? Who ignites the fire of our joy? The one who brings movement to everything in us, offers blossoming life, impetuous lightness, breaks out of joy because nothing else is enough. Heartbeat after heartbeat pulsates truth through us, and ebulliently we call the joy of the Lord, God of heaven and earth is my strength. Who strikes the first spark? It is He who ignites our fire. He calls out, Rejoice! For He is the one who creates the light in the darkness. From light, He gives us tens of thousands of colors to rejoice. Life and fullness, from the first to the last breath, He says to us, Rejoice! Rejoice!